you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hi, this is Mr. T with a tutorial on exponential functions. I'll be doing this tutorial in four parts, and this is the first part. We're going to get an introduction to exponential functions and understand how they behave by looking at their graphs. So let's first look at a exponential function y equals 2 to the x. Now as we're getting familiar with a function, one way to get a picture or a graph of a function is to make a table of values. So I've picked some values of x here and our function here, so we need to calculate the y values. Let's start here. So y would be 2 to the 0 power, which we know from our exponent properties is 1. Here we have 2 to the first power, which would be 2. And 2 to the third power here is 8. So you can see as we're increasing our x values, we will keep every time x goes up 1 with this function, our y value will be doubling. So it'll be increasing quite rapidly. Let's look at what happens when we go into the negative. So 2 to the negative 1. Remember from our exponent properties, a negative exponent can be converted to a positive exponent by taking the reciprocal. So we have 1 half, or 0.5 here. And if we do uh, negative 3, that's going to be 1 over 8, which is approximately 0.125. So you can see with the negative exponents, our numerator will stay 1, and our denominator will be getting bigger and bigger. If you take the number 1 and divide by bigger and bigger numbers, we're going to be approaching 0. So as we head out this direction, we're going to be getting closer and closer to zero. That's called a horizontal asymptote. And as we go this direction, we get large very quickly. So if we plot our points, so we here, we're at uh, 1 at uh, x equals 0. At x equals 1, we were at 2. And at x equals 3, we were up at 8. And at negative 1, we were 0.5. And out here at negative 3, we were 0.125. And again, it's not going to ever equal exactly 0, but it's going to get closer and closer. So if we connect our pattern here, we can see that the graph... Now, that wasn't a very good graph. I'm not really good with this uh, pad here. But this is going to keep going up. Not straight up. It's going to keep going out. Let me see if I can do that better here. It's going to keep heading to the right, but it's going to keep going up very fast. So it's kind of like a, some people call this a, a, a knee curve. So around this area, it starts uh, going up very rapidly. So, and then over here again, it's getting closer and closer to zero, but never touching zero. So we're going to be using this model in our last example, b was 2, that's the thing with the exponent, and a in the last model was 1. Now this will be our general model, and we want to look at what happens as we change various values. So let's stick with our base function of y equals 2 to the x, so that would be 1 times 2 to the x. And let me, where I'm going to, to make it quicker here, let's use a graphing utility to uh, look at the graph. So let me put in here 2 to the x power. And we'll graph that and get our baseline here. So you can see that's the same graph we just did. So let's look happens if we increase a. So let's say what if a is uh, 3. So we're going to have 3 times 2 to the x. So let me put that into y2 so that we can have a comparison. So let's look here at 3 times 2 to the x power. Whoops, I forgot the exponent. And let's graph. So that was the first one. So now you can see we're going up a little more steeply. And our y-intercept went from 1 to 3. Uh, let's look at what happens if we make a equals 5. Uh, 
Uh, let's, well, I'll add a third one here. It's going to get a little bit busy. So here we've got 5 times 2 raised to the x power. So you can see it's getting even more steeply. And if we zoom in now, our y-intercept is 5. And let's look at what if a is a fraction. So let's look at one last example here. So uh, let me go back here. Let's get rid of a couple of these so that we can uh, see what happens. And let's put in now 1 half, which is 0 0.5 times 2 to the x. And we'll see it's not going to go up quite so steeply. And if we zoomed in, we would see that our y-intercept is at uh, 0.5. So when a, so a couple things, a gives us our y-intercept, which is our initial value, meaning our value when x equals 0. That's really the most important part of a. And then it can also affect the steepness. So when a is greater than 1, it gets steeper. And if a is a fraction, say between 0 and 1, it uh, is less steep. Now from our, uh, let's look at one last thing. Let's look at what happens if a is negative from our discussion of translating functions when we did quadratics. If you remember the a in quadratics, if it was negative, it flipped the uh, curve. So let's look at what happens here if we replace this with, say, negative. We'll put negative 1 in for a. So let's say negative 1 times 2 to the x power. And let's graph again. So here is going to be our base function here, 2 to the x. And as we can see, uh, it flipped the function. So if a is negative, we're going to flip the curve. So again, a key item here is it's our initial value when x equals 0. Let's look at the effect of b. So in all of our examples so far, we had b is 2. So let's look at a couple examples. So let's start out by making b bigger. So let's look at y equals 2 to the x, say 3 to the x, Whoops, that's supposed to be a y. And uh, we'll do y equals 5 to the x. So let's look at those. So we've got our 2 to the x. Let's make this 3 to the x. And let's do 5 to the x. And let's graph. So here coming first is 2 to the x, comes 3 to the x, and 5 to the x. So you can see it gets, they all have the same y-intercept. They all asymptote out here at 0, but they rise, after we get bigger than 1, they rise more steeply. And that's because what we are doing here is every time we increase x, we're multiplying our result by this b. So if we're multiplying by a bigger number, it's going to grow more rapidly. So when b is greater than 1, we are growing and growing more rapidly. Now let's look at what happens if we look at a fraction for b. So let's say what if we had y equals 1 half to the x. So let me enter our functions. Let's clear these out. And let's put in, say, 0.5 to the x. Now this looks weird because it looks like the sh same shape as y equals 2 to the x, but it's going backwards. It's going bigger over here. 
Now this would make sense because if we move that 2 to the 1, that would be y equals 2 to the negative 1 to the x using our exponent properties, which would be y equals 2 to the negative x. So when y, I mean when b is a fraction, instead of going from, if we go left to right from 0 and then rising rapidly here, we start out really big when um, x is a negative number and then we're flattening out. So when b is less than 1 but bigger than 0, we have what's called exponential decay. Our function value is getting uh, reduced. And just like before, if we make this number uh, smaller, so let's just do one more. Let's say what if it had been about 1 fourth, which would be 0.25. We can see as before it uh, de decreases more rapidly. Now b and these exponential functions will never be a negative number. A negative number raised to a power behaves very erratically. So on our exponential models, b will always be a positive number. a could be positive or negative. Remember when a is negative, it flips the uh, curve around the x-axis. Our last thing here will be to look at what I call the translations. We've been doing this with a lot of our families. So now we have, instead of x as our exponent, we have x minus h. And then we have here k. So that should be familiar from our recent function on um, our unit on quadratics. So if we graph here the base function here without any translations, remember the a is our y-intercept, so our will be at 3 and we're going up by 2 so every time we go by 2 so here we would be at 6 and then we're going to be off the curve here we would be up at 12 up here and remember we are going to be approaching the uh, zero value out here so this might be the sketch of this one so we did this in blue so let's change colors here and do this translation in red now, if you remember on our translations, when we add or subtract something to the x, we are shifting right and left. It's a horizontal shift. And since in the template as minus, this will be a shift of 3 to the right. And if you remember this number, the k is a vertical shift. And in this case, we would be shifting up 4. So to sketch the graph, if we knew this graph, every point's going to go um, right 3. So this point's going to go right 3 and up 4. This point is going to go right 3, up 4. When we go out here, it's flattened out, so the right and left doesn't mean anything, but our horizontal asymptote is going to go up 4. So this function will flatten out, not at 0, but at 4. So we're going to be out here. So now we could draw, draw our graph, and we would see here what it looks like. So all the work we did on understanding how translations work for quadratics are going to work here. So this is the end of our first unit on exponential functions. We explored the graphs of exponential functions and how they behave. And in our next unit, we'll be talking about applying exponential functions to real-world problems. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you